Hello and welcome to the first Friday reading vlog of 2023. <laughs> it's exciting isn't it to be back doing the Friday reading vlogs. This Friday reading vlog is going to be very chill. So today I was supposed to be going to London to see Mercedes but there's a train strike. I wholeheartedly agree with train strikes and the right to strike. Um, so I've been unable to go. So which has probably worked out for the best because I've woken up with horrific period pains. Now, I've sort of managed to hot water bottle and painkiller it off for a bit. Um, and I've just been sort of laying in bed feeling lovely and warm and not lovely because in pain. Um, so yeah, so I think it's gonna be a really chill one. Um, and should we start as we always do with me going to make a cup of tea and then going to pick the book that I'm going to be reading. I think there's gonna be a few little additions this year not changes to the friday reading vlogs but additions certainly so let's go make a cup of tea and um i'll see you in there then i'll see you in the lounge yeah does want to come to. He's also reminded me that outside of Christmas and Halloween, all of our mugs are quite boring. So I don't know if we might buy ourselves a little mug treat inch. I'm using this one, which is from Typo. I really like it because it reminds me, I might have shown you this already. It shows, it reminds me of a set of like crockery that my nan had when she lived in that old house. I mean, She's not with us anymore, but not her most recent house she lived in because she was no longer with us. Plastic milk for David, that's like a good This was a wedding present from my sister. She's got this very same pan and I've always coveted it. When we got it for the wedding, I was very excited. We've used it a few times. It's the most amazing non-stick pan. You can just sort of cook everything in it. And I'll be cooking the dinner in it this evening. I'll take David's tea to him, I'll take my tea through and I'll see you in the lounge, yeah? The light in here is just absolutely beautiful today. It's really, really nice. It's gonna be lovely to have a little read in here with a, with a blankie. It's so nice. We've also got our glitter ball from the wedding, which now coats the ceiling and all these lovely lights. So yeah, it's a nice space to be. I was sad putting Christmas away, as I always am. But um, yeah, once you put it away, it does feel 
fresh and new, doesn't it, ready? <laughs> this looks very bare, fresh and new. Right, okay, so I suppose I'll go and pick the books, books that I'm going to be reading today, um, and then I'll pick the usual stuff that we do. I'll run through how we normally do these um, Friday reading vlogs so that um, any newbies can see what happens here. And then, as I said, I've got a little additional excitement to be getting on with on the Friday reading vlogs, I think. As I said, today I've got period pain, it's gonna be quite slow. One of my big plans for today, well, two of the big plans for today, with our wedding money that people were kind enough to gift us when they came along to our wedding, David and I have bought a whole new bed. A whole new bed. Got a new mattress, which we needed because the last mattress we bought when we moved in, so we'd had it like nine years almost. New mattress, new duvet. It was a king size duvet so that we can have more duvet because they're stealing it. New pillows, new duvet covers, new sheets, and um, which is very exciting. Now, the, the the mattress arrived earlier this week. We love it, it's very firm. We feel like it's so big where the other one has sort of like sagged. So we feel like we're like top of the tower in it. The pillows have arrived, the duvet covers have arrived and the duvet arrives today. So one of my jobs today is to change the duvet into the new duvet, the sheets into the new sheets, the pillows to the new pillows. So that's something that I will do regardless and David will help me with it. The other job I wanted to do, which is a big job and involves making a video about it, is um, <clears throat> rearrange my shelves. Um, and I guess that just depends how I'm feeling a bit later on. So I'm gonna wait till I've had something to eat and some ibuprofen, because I would like to do it today, because it needs doing. And also this chair then needs to, although however, David was sat on this chair and one of the legs have broken off of it. So we need to get a replacement, but we don't live near an Ikea. Um, so we need to wait until we're going to an Ikea, or nearly an Ikea, um, because it's £20 for four replacement legs, and delivery on Ikea is like also £20. So we can't sit on the chair at the moment, but I want to move the chair in front of the bookshelves for this period when the lounge is set up like this. Um, so yeah, so I do need to do the bookshelves. But anyway, let me go and pick the books, and then we'll talk through reading plans for today. And I'll do a bit more reading in this lovely light with my lovely blankie. Lovely. So, I am currently reading a book that I'm very much enjoying and I will be continuing with it today. And that's Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. So, more on that later. Now, as I'm so into this, I want something that isn't going to take... So, I don't want fiction because I want to be immersed in this. And I was thinking it might be nice to start this essay collection. Because um, I can sort of read an essay and it won't interrupt my fiction reading. Um, this is body language, so I think I'm gonna take this and then let's stock up a little bit more because I imagine I'll be picking one. That's all that can fit in at the moment. Yeah, there we go. The, the January TBR, it's exciting, isn't it? Oh, and of course I'll be needing my lit chat, my poem for every win today, and my new item reading challenge so there we are books so as i said i'm very much into um outlander by diana gabaldon i'm 236 pages in i have also watched the first episode of the tv show and i would like to continue watching the tv show and i think i'll watch another couple of episodes today but i want to read ahead of what's going on in the tv show so um i think based on what i've read because also this book so there's I think there's 12 episodes in the first series and this book is 871 pages long. Now, I divided that by 12 and it's roughly about 70 pages. So that's making me think that each episode is roughly about 70 pages. Now, I know things happen outside of sync in TV world, but I reckon I've probably got three episodes I can watch before I start going into what's happening here. So I might watch another couple of episodes of that later on. David and I only have the one telly in our house. Poor us. No, not really. One telly is more than enough. Um, and I'm not much of a telly watcher. David and David games on there as well. So um, I have to sort of pick my moments to watch TV when David's not here, basically. Well, David's working today. He's working from home, but he's working. 
so now might be the time to watch maybe the second episode of it but I'm really really enjoying it um, it's a historical fiction um, romance about um, a woman Claire Randall who in the 40s her and her um, husband have taken a second honeymoon to Scotland and somehow she gets transported back in time to like I'm not actually sure what time it is maybe the 1700s um, and um, she is trying to find her place there, trying to potentially find her way back. She doesn't seem all that bothered about finding her way back. She's mentioned it a few times, but mainly she's like trying to integrate herself with the community. I'm very, very much enjoying it. Um, and then, as I said, I picked Body Language, uh, which is Writers on Identity, Physicality and Making Space for Ourselves. This is edited by Nicole Chung and Matt Ortiel. Um, and I thought, as I'm so into my fiction book at the moment, this would be a good, rather than start another fiction book or something else, um, or short stories or something this would be a good idea to maybe read because you can read sort of short um, essays without and, and have a moment with them and then put that to a side and then come back to them later so it's not something that i need to continue reading with but i'm very very excited about this i love this front cover i'm very excited to read it so that's the reading plans let's go on to other plans david's just finished his work meeting and he's in it being all cute with his trousers pulled up high not pulled down <laughs> Um, so yeah, so these um, Friday reading vlogs, they run very much with a formula um, and one part of it is that at the beginning of the um, video I pick out a lit chat question from this collection of bookish question cards um, and then we all have a think about it over the, over the video and then we answer it at the end and I like to hear your answers to these um, questions below in the comments so do feel free to answer. Um, we've got all of these guys i'm quite excited about getting back into the old reading vlogs very nice so i always have a shuffle but i'm not the best shuffler when it's just merely a pack of cards let alone when it's this as well right okay let's go for never let me go what book would you recommend for a broken heart what book would you recommend for a broken heart very good question and i will think about that as the day goes by and come up with an answer for you by the end of the day. And if you've got any answers, then as I said, write them in the comments, very excited to hear. Then at the end of the video, we always end with a poem. Um, I've got these two collections. I actually need to get the spring collection because this runs up until the end of February, doesn't it? Um, I need to get the spring and the summer collection probably. And I, I read a poem out at the end of every vlog because that's cute isn't it and then the new thing so something that was included in my um christmas gift guide was this wonderful the ultimate reading challenge book so this is a collection of 25 reading challenges well it says 25 plus let's find out one two three it's actually 24 so it's not 25 plus um 24 reading challenges um, so I'm not going to do this every week, um, but I'm going to try and complete a challenge and then we get to look together and see what I've been awarded with. So I've already picked my books. I'm not going out today. Let's see what sort of challenge that we could do. Right. So one of them is, so there's, there's bookish challenges. There's sort of like reading challenges. There's buying books or getting book challenges. Um, okay. Oh. Okay, so we've got read a novella, not going to happen. Find and read a book that is much longer than your usual reads. Well, the um, Outlander is much longer than my usual reads, but I haven't completed that book yet. Write a letter to someone who has influenced your reading life. This could be a parent, teacher, author, bookstore owner or a friend. It's okay to make it anonymous. That's quite cute. Read in a place you've never read before. Well, I'm sort of sticking to home today, so that's not really going to work. Read a book uh, you selected based purely on its cover design. Reread a classic you hated in, in high school. Attend an author event, either in person or virtually. Um, won't be doing that today. Read a book about a person with a disability. I don't know. Well, first of all, there's a person with a disability in this book. I don't know if this is about disability or is about physicality. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is like purely about disability. Re uh, listen to a reading themed podcast. I'd be quite up for doing that. Read a graphic novel. Reread a book you loved as a child. Visit your local bookstore. Won't be doing that today. Read a book by an author whose ethnicity is different from your own. There are essays in here from um, authors whose ethnicity is different from my own. 
read a new book that is primarily intended for children, go to the favourite section of the library or the bookstore, blindly take a book off the shelf and take it home to read, write down a favourite quote or passage from a beloved book, display it in your home, read a book that's been sitting on your shelf unread for more than a year, I'll definitely be getting around to doing that, read a, genre, uh, read a book in a genre you've never read before, to think of a genre I've never read before, read a book published this year, uh, read a book that features an indigenous person, gift a copy of your favourite book to a friend or family member, special occasion not required, that's lovely, read a book currently on the bestsellers list, make or order a snack or meal described in a book you've read, ask a family member what book has made a lasting impression on them, find and read that book, or participate in a book club in person or virtually. Okay, so some of these are impossible to do today. I could listen to a reading themed podcast. I could also be taking part already in find and read a book that is much longer than your usual reads. Like I said, this book is 871 pages. I don't normally do that. And read a, oh, read a book about a person. Well, this isn't about a person with a disability. This has got a person with a disability in it. I think probably at the end, I will open, find and read a book that is much longer than your usual reads because this book is much longer than my usual reads so there we go the first challenge i will have completed lovely stuff so we picked our question we picked the challenge i'm taking part in today we know there's a poem coming i'm going to finish the chapter of outlander that i'm on at the moment whilst reading my tea and then having my breakfast and then i'll read the introduction and the first essay in body language beautiful light beautiful day Let's go. The next line in my book is, but he might be suspicious of me turning up in the company of the Mackenzies. He might. I've got a little kitty on me. Um, so I've just had my breakfast and as I said, finished the chapter of Outlander I was on. And still very much enjoying it. Very, very much enjoying it. Um, she just come back into contact with her um, partner in the current world, his six times great grandfather, who is a prick. Um, so she just come back into contact with him after six weeks of being in that world. And like I said, like she doesn't seem all that. I mean, she occasionally mentions trying to find her way back, but she's not really making much effort to do it. She is prisoner in a castle, I suppose. Um, and then I read the first essay and the introduction, as I said, um, in body language. Uh, and this one was called The Crematorium by Nina Riggs. Everything all right, Minnie? Um, and this was about a woman who. Um, whose mother has died of cancer and they are witnessing her cremation hiccup um and it's about the body after death and who's in there or how that feels to someone oh my windows are being cleaned by the window cleaner at the moment oh they're gonna be lovely you you frightened of that mini very cute they're gonna look lovely and clean after this he's having a good old go on them I'll probably go and watch this and uh, I'm going to watch an episode of Outlander before I get in the bath we haven't got any ibuprofen so David's going to have his breakfast and go out and get some so yeah I'm going to watch an episode of Outlander it's over there now isn't it Vinny The duvet's arrived. It's so lovely and big and, and ready. And I'm changed. I had a lovely bath. It really was a lovely bath. David, you're in this. Do you want to wave? Oh, he's got his noise cancelling headphones on. And let me tell you, they are noise cancelling. He can't hear a thing I'm saying. Um, yeah, we. Uh, I had a bath. I read another chapter of Outlander. I read another essay in body language. Very interesting essay in body language about a woman who works as a uh, model, still life model for art classes um, and what it's like to use your body in that way. I think there's going to be a whole host of different body related things in here and I'm very much up for it. Um, today, because I'm in the throes of January where I'm wearing a different colour every single day, um, is purple day. Now I was going to wear, David's sister got me a voucher for Christmas and I bought this amazing 90s grey midi denim skirt that I was so excited to wear when I'm on my period I just need my tummy to not be under the restrictions of denim so I've put on a pair of knitted pyjama bottoms so I've got my purple on top and then this so I'm a knitted vibe today I'm going to change the bed sheets 
I'll show you the bed sheet. I'm going to put on the... So we've got, two, we've got a whole new, I'm sure I've said this, a whole new bed. So duvet, pillows, mattress, and then two sets of bed sheets. One that I'm going to put on today. So this one is a, a more spring summer type set, which is brushed cotton, tufted diamond duvet set with relaxed washed cotton. They're both from Asda. I've had bedding from Asda for years and it always washes up very well. So it's got these sort of diamonds on it. Very nice. And then I've got new pillowcases. There should be another one of those. Oh no, it's full there. And a new sheet, new double sheet. And then this is the one that I'm going to put on today, which is brushed cotton in this sort of pattern. Here, so that you can either have the grey side up or the white side up. I think we're gonna go grey side. So exciting as it is to have a whole new a whole new bed, it also meant that sadly all of our duvet covers no longer fit our duvet because we had a double duvet and now we've got a king size duvet. I've, I'm keeping quite a lot of them because I'm gonna ask my mum to make me some stuff out of them. Maybe a shirt, maybe a dress. She made a dress out for me out of a duvet set last year. Um, We've got quite a few Christmas ones. I've given a Christmas set to my friend Emma. Um, but yeah, so we've got to build up some more duvet sets now. So this one's going on first. And then we'll put the tufted diamond one on next. I'm going to do this. And then I might have some lunch. I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. I took some ibuprofen just before I got in the bath. That's a bit of a trick of mine, is that if you aren't feeling too good take some tablets and get in the bath and then by the time you get out of the bath you would have helped with the tummy because of bath and also the tablets would have kicked in so I'm feeling all right I'm currently listening to Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola who um this is the here we go um who wrote um Loving Colour which was a collection of short stories about and um, retellings of um myths and legends and folklore centering black women which I very, very much enjoyed. I don't think I read it last year. I think I read it the year before and it was one of my favourite books of the year. Um, so I've been looking forward to reading her novel. And I'm enjoying it. Sort of campus novel, set at a university. I can't work out if it's at a, a US university because the narrator is English. But there's a lot of talk about, like there's a lot of Americanisms in there in terms of university life. But I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. She's got a radio show with her best friend. We've just learned how her and her best friend met. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. I am enjoying it a lot. So I'm going to listen to that while I do this. And then it'll probably be time to make some lunch. David's just hard working away in there, isn't he? So yeah, let's do that. Slipping in his own creations from his side hustle as a bedroom producer. He bent down to kiss me on both cheeks, then reached for a leader's mind to put it to his lips. Kofi's pillows. Everything's on there. You want to get in? I'm not jumping on it. I don't want to break it. I feel a bit hot. You probably do because you just put it all to. But I don't. Is it nice? This is nice. Oh, it's always oh, pillows are soft. Good. Happy? Right, <coughs> right for dribbling on. Oh, no dribbling. I told David he's on a no dribbling. Oh my god. I shouldn't be getting into this bed when I'm working. All right, let me just try a little bit. Oh my God. My day's it's finished. It's so high, isn't it? So high. I only feel like I could Oh, I'm so close to the ceiling. It's very nice. The du the, the oh. king size duvet. There's so much duvet here. Yeah. Have you still not got much? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. There we go. Oh. There we go. Great oh. wedding present. Great wedding present. We just need to keep our eye out. For some more, one more set of um, yeah, uh, king size duvet because we're gonna need. We're gonna need. I think we're gonna need three. I think three is a good amount. And then one Christmas one. Two Christmas ones. Okay, two Christmas. We need two ones. Christmas ones. Okay, really, we don't need two Christmas. And an autumnal one. Okay, so we've gone from getting one. one more to getting how many? And a summer one. Four. Yeah, I do think it's nice to have seasonal bedding. Yeah, definitely. 
This is, is a bit of an all rounder, if I'm being honest, because the stars and moons, that's all that. And also, you can see, you can have oh. it on this side as well. But like that. this is brushed cotton, and we're not going to want this in the summer. Definitely not, but. So, we'll get, you're right, we'll get a spring one, a summer one, an autumn one, and two Christmas ones. Five yeah. more sets. And then that's it. That's all we need. Yes. Yeah, we can get so we have seven of... sets in total. Yeah. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Well, maybe. Hold on. Well, one of the white, the white one we got can probably be. Is that? Yeah, that's yeah. That can be summer. That can be summer. So we need spring, summer. No, we've already got summer. Spring. This could count as autumn. Or do you yeah. not think so? No, I agree. I don't know. if It might be a bit warm for autumn. Yeah, probably. This is very be a bit warm, much. A... Wouldn't it? I'm starting to get a little bit warm now. Yeah. Oh well. Well, I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Husband. Bye. Right. Well, I'm going to make lunch soon, but I've just read another chapter of Outlander and I'm going to read the next essay, which is Don't Fear the Feeding Tube by Kayla Whaley. All of these essays, oh, actually, she says this one's the longest one so far. All of them have so far been very, very short. So if that is your thing, reading sort of short things in terms of essays, then this is for you. And already I'm two in and I'm very much enjoying it. More reading done, time for lunch. <clears throat> We're having for lunch exactly what we had for dinner last night because it was so delicious and I had a lot of the stuff to recreate it. Would highly recommend this, it takes a mere 10 minutes. It's Indian style lentil salad with sticky paneer and you need lentils, cherry tomatoes, paneer, curry powder, nigella seeds, mango chutney, one carrot, some coriander and some mint, and lettuce and basically you grate the carrot chop the tomatoes fry off the paneer in the curry powder and then add a little bit of the mango chutney and the nigella seeds mix together oh sorry white wine vinegar with a bit of um, mango chutney as well to, and a bit of olive oil to make a dressing chop the salad pop the lentils in the microwave for a bit menage it all together one 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 and then I think maybe we'll watch yesterday's um, House of Games because we haven't watched it, but my god, it's a dry week. There's no one on there with any sort of bants. It's hard work watching it. Um, or we could watch the third episode of Young Master Chef, which we're also quite enjoying. Anyway, I'm going to make this now. Carry on listening to my audiobook and uh, then eat it. I'll show you it when it's cooked. It really is very good and very simple. Can she make it? <laughs> we'll never make a food tuber of her, will we? Yum. Really, really yum. Sweetie bums. <coughs> well, that salad was lovely, wasn't it, David? It was delicioso. David said it was even better than the first time round we had it. Was. Anyway, I'm Ooh. just removing the washing from my dry soon, which normally is much fuller than this, but I took the towel that previously dried off to have a, have a bath earlier. And now I'm going to put on the last of the Christmas sheets. This Christmas sheet in particular, I'm sad to see, because it's sort of more wintry, really. Mm. Berries and stuff, mm. so. And I won't be able to get that anymore. I can't remember where we got that from in the first place. I don't think it was Asda. Maybe it was. Asda do the best bed in. Anyway, so. I'm about to listen to some more of my audio book whilst I put this on. Getting to the right dregs of this now. I know, David's got a box full of chocolates, which is got all of the worst chocolates left. Yeah, the coins are alright, but... I'm not into coins. Um, and then, I mean, my plan was to sort of do that this afternoon. I don't know whether or not to do it. Or at least start on it. It's sort of a job that I really want to crack on and get done the whole lot. Is it lot. not maybe a good job tomorrow if you do it all? Well, I might not be able to do it all tomorrow, David, because if we're doing hardcore chores, sometimes we can get into the zone of that can't we that's true we're gonna, I'm not gonna do it on sunday yeah i could you're so right i'm not gonna put this on the thingy i'm gonna hang this over the door because these do dry better over the door but yeah that's how the afternoon's going lots of reading lots of being relaxed my tummy feels good i haven't had to take any more painkillers so hopefully, maybe I will do start on this. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. <coughs>
I did a thing where I text my sister to say, did her and her husband want to come around for dinner? And then literally the second I sent the text, I was like, oh God, I don't want to talk to anyone tonight. So I was waiting for her to get back to me and she didn't. And then she rung me and I thought she was ringing me to confirm details. And I was like, oh, what's your answer about tonight? Then she said, no, I've already got something out for dinner. And I was like, thank God. And I said, thank God for that. Cause I could not be bothered to clean. <laughs> Cause I was halfway through doing the bookshelves. I have done a bit of tidying up from the bookshelves. Um, but yeah, it is now, David, half past six. Yes. How do you want the evening to play out? God, it's half six. Yeah, so I suppose I better start making dinner. Yeah. I'll go and start making, I'm going to tidy the kitchen first, then I'll start making dinner, and then we can watch Persuasion with Dinner. How does that sound? It sounds like a Can I persuade plan. you to watch Persuasion with Dinner? Persuaded. <laughs> well, we've been <coughs> cooking up a storm in the kitchen tonight from the Christmas present from David's mum, Meat Free Mowgli. I also got this for my sister. We are having chickpea catty rolls, except we haven't got catty rolls. David's made like little tacos. Hello, Minnie. Uh, we've also got, which we are both very excited about, a chopped salad. This one, Indian green chopped salad. And then I'm just about to make, what page is that? No, 73. I'm just about to make some Punjabi padron peppers. We're gonna eat it all and it's gonna be delicious. I feel a bit worn out. Oh, doesn't this all look delicious? I'm very excited to eat this dinner this evening that Lauren has mainly made, and I've made the corn tortilla things using my press, and they're still nice and warm. We've got lots of lovely, delicious looking things here, and we are watching this evening Persuasion on Netflix with Dakota Johnson. Um, not really my cup of tea, but Lauren wants to watch it, so I watched the trailer, it looks like it could be quite fun, a little bit like Emmerich, so that'll be exciting. And this will be our fourth new movie of the year already, and it's only the, what, 6th of Jan? Yeah, so we're doing, we're on course to watch shitloads of movies this year now. Uh, and I think I'm going to go and watch Avatar this weekend as well. So How embarrassing, I've got to put the... I'm going to be there. well away. Oh, this all looks nice. Doesn't it? All right. I'm going to... I'm just going to get myself a, a plate of some good-looking shiz and just tuck on right in. Right. Yum, yum, yum. Excuse me. Oh, your head's been chopped off while you've been talking about all your delicious. Oh, no. But I'm sure they got the gist. Oh, Thank were you doing you. it like that? I was going to do it like, get the little thing. No, I think I'm just going to... And then pop a bit of this Yeah, in. actually, you're probably right. I probably should have done like, like a, that, but Like a mind. taco. Yeah, I should have done it like that, but never mind. Anyway, use... we're going to watch Persuasion now. Back after that. Oh, dear. For a roundup of the day. And a roundup of Persuasion, indeed. Bye. Well, I, for one, very much enjoyed Persuasion. I mean, the breaking of the fourth wall was very flea bag. It was very, like, th they can't have been inspired by anything other than flea bag. No, agreed. On that, it was very, like, side eye, yeah. winking, <laughs> all that sort of thing. But I enjoyed it. I think it bath looked beautiful. The outfits were really great. I thought. Yeah, and Laura and I went to Bath earlier this year, so it was nice to revisit some of those places that we'd actually walked along. I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. But we have reached the end of the reading vlog. Alas. It's half past one, David. Uh, half past one, half past nine, David. So, what we do is we do... What was so, that called again? It was called Persuasion, David. Also, something very funny at the beginning. I'm going to put this on Instagram as well, David. At the beginning of the film, David said, "So is persuasion set in the same universe as Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> like the same multiverse, like the Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe? Yeah, the Jane Austen Cinematic yeah. Universe. Like Emma, like Emma pops up in the background. Yeah, very funny. Right, okay. So, guess I'm not. Then. I'm getting one of these." 
What, what is Look, it? I've done one of my challenges today. Oh, okay, cool. Find and read a book that is much longer than your usual reads. Well, we can Outlander. all say this is much longer that than my usual longer. reads. So, what do I get? Oh, so you fi have you finished Outlander? No, I haven't finished it, but oh, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a... Well, I'm going to finish it, oh, but I'm doing a challenge for each time I do one of these okay. things, and this is the one that we've done today. So, okay. what have we got? This is exciting. Oh, these are so cute. I mean, everything I've seen so far. These are so cute. What are these stickers? Yeah, they're little stickers to go on books if you gift someone a book. Oh, oh that is very cute. That is so lovely. <laughs> um, actually, one of these is um, gift a copy of your favourite book to a friend or family member, special occasion, not required. So I'll be able to use these. These are adorable. I will come close and show you. This is such a lovely gift to myself. Um, so here they are, little gift stickers. Look, and they're all sort of bookish. Don't wave, David. We've got to concentrate on the gift stickers. That is so lovely, and I will definitely, definitely use those. That is so nice. So, so nice. Um, and then we'll answer the question. The question was, what book would you recommend for a broken heart? So, I've, I've sort of taken this as a romantic broken heart rather than any other broken heart. Um, the first book I would recommend is the Rebecca Humphreys book, Why Did You Stay If Your Heart Has Been Broken? Probably by someone who's not deserving of your heart. So this book I found very, um, very interesting and sort of like made me feel reassured about the sort of toxic relationships I'd been in in the past. Whereas I thought that things that I'd said and done had been wrong. Whereas it wasn't that. It was the dickheads I was with in the past. So I, I highly recommend that book. Also Bridget Jones's Diary. I think they're great books to sort of like that show that things move on from, from heartbreak and stuff like that. It's quite a good example of heartbreak. But if you're, if you, to be honest... The question, what book would you recommend for a broken heart? I would always say like an old favourite or something very warming. Um, His Dark Material springs to mind. Um, the Nevermore series. Just something that's going to really take your mind off of things and a world you can escape into. That is what I would say. David, what films or music did you listen to when you were heartbroken? Oh, um... <laughs> um... Mario, let me love you. You, you should let, let me love you. you. Let me be the yeah. one to give you everything you want in me. Yeah, that was, was the next time. Good love, good looks, and affection. Affection. Make me have an erection. <laughs> That is um, so cheesy that that's oh what God. you listen yeah, to, yeah, David. I used to listen to that. I can, I can Films. well imagine it. I can well imagine it. Really? Comfort. Yeah. Okay, so the 6th of January today, we've got two poems. You tell me which one you want to hear. It's either The Three Kings by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow or Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot. Journey of the Magi. Because we've just been watching about Anne Eliot. Going on a journey. Here we go. Is this a long one? It's a long one. Settle in. Oh. Put that phone down. He loves listening to me read poetry. Well, I like any one poetry, no thank you. <laughs> she <laughs> says about it, he says crack, about, me about Crack it. on. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year. For a journey and such a long journey, the way's deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camel's gourd saw footed refractory, lying down in the melted snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women. And the night fires going out and the lack of shelters. And the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn we came down to a temperate valley, wet below the snow wine, smelling of vegetation, with a, dark stri with a running stream and a water mill beat in the darkness and three trees on the low sky. And an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at an open door dicing for pieces of silver and feet kicking the empty wine skins. But there was no information, and so we continued, and arriving at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place, it was, you may say, satisfactory. All of this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again, but set down this set down. This, where 
we led all that way for birth or death there was a birth certainly we had evidence and no doubt i'd seen birth and death but had thought that they were different this birth was hard and bitter agony for us like death our death we returned to our places these kingdoms but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods i should be glad of another death didn't i could tell from your body language that you were like oh, like for people who love poetry, great. Yeah, but you won't love all poetry, just like you don't love all films. I didn't particularly like that, but there's some other poems that I've read in it yeah. that I really enjoyed. Poems. Poems. <coughs> well, let me tell you this one. Right, okay, I'll yeah. give you one more. Is it a funny one? Yeah, you're going to absolutely love this one. This okay. is from the 8th of January, and it's I'm called... I'm excited already. It's called The More It Snows, and it's by A.A. A. Milne. Okay. The more it snows, tiddly pom, the more it goes, tiddly pom, the more it goes, tiddly pom, on snowing. And nobody knows, tiddly pom, how cold my toes, tiddly pom, how cold my toes, tiddly pom, are growing. Nice. That's a lot. That's a lot, that one. Here we go. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for joining us for the reading vlog today. Um, and I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Say bye, David. Bye. Bye.